CQ, CQ for Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. CQ, CQ for Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. CQ, CQ for Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. Two hours later. CQ, CQ for Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. CQ, please CQ. CQ, CQ, CQ for Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. There has to be an easier way. It's 5 watts. QRP is just not cutting it. What shall I do? What shall I do? Hey friend, uh, sorry to bother you. You look very busy. Uh, a couple of people told me you're the guy to talk to with if I've got QRP radio problems. Uh, we need to get out of them further. What are you buying? Okay, whip grease and a QRP amp. I'll go with the QRP Good amp. Good call. Hey everybody, hope you enjoyed that opening little video, whatever you'd call that. Today we're gonna to be talking about a QRP amplifier, the MXP50W. P50 makes you think that it's a 50 watt amplifier, but no, it's a 45 watt amplifier, specifically for QRP radios. It will go from 10 meters all the way up to 80 meters, and generally requires about five watts of output to get you to 45 watts. It's got a front dial that allows you to pick the band and the power on off switch, which turns the amp on when in off mode, puts it into passive mode so that you can operate QRP directly through the amp. In my testing with this uh, little amplifier, I have found that it puts out about, uh, requires about 6.7 amps to draw 45 watt output. So if you feed it five watts, it's gonna pull 6.7 or so off your battery to output 45 watts. Okay, don't mind my mad scientist setup here, but we have a power meter in between the battery and the amp hooked up to a watt meter. This is the last output before it goes into the antenna. The antenna in this case is a dummy load. So I'm gonna leave this off. I'm gonna key up. We draw about one amp on the KX2 and we get out a paltry amount. If I turn this off, I've got it set for one watt right now, and that's about what it's showing, one watt. So one watt output, I'll put it back on high mode, turn the amp on, I'm on 20 meters, and it's about 20 watts output and about a 4.58 amp draw. Let's go all the way up to five amps, sorry, five watt, and I will turn this back to low power so you can see it. Five watt output, okay, amp on, back to high, key down, about 45 watts output so that's it that's all there really is to this it's this is on or pass through and you change the band selection you can see the little light comes on you can change the band pretty easily now depending on what band you're operating i've seen about a 10 percent variation in the power draw so if you're on 80 meters it's going to draw maybe a little bit less and 10 meters it's going to draw a little bit more and it, there's a bit of variation there i don't put the numbers into it because i'm not sure that all of them are going to behave identically and that's one of the issues with this thing. So an important thing to keep in mind, this is a Chinese made amplifier. And so you can expect a certain level of, of Chinese quality that goes into it. But as far as it being made in China, it, it's not that bad as far as the quality goes. I like the front panel on it, the lights that are on it give you the information you need. Um, I've said it before when I was reviewing the AL811 uh, amplifier. Amplifiers are kind of a straightforward business. Uh, you have a couple of things that you have to do and you must always do them. And once you kind of learn what it is you're supposed to do, they kind of do the job. Uh, and when you don't do them, that's when things bad things happen. So, you know, make sure you're careful with this. I would recommend putting an SWR meter um, outbound between the antenna and the amplifier so that you know exactly what the SWR reading is on this and what the power output is. You really want to make sure you're using a resonant antenna with this guy. You don't want to give it a lot of SWR because that's just going to feed back and it's going to possibly damage this. So if you can have something in your kit or if you know your antenna really well if you're just using a dipole for instance and you know it can handle 45 watts 
which is pretty easy to do, then you may be able to get away without having it. So in the short time that I've had this amplifier, I've been successful with it. I connected it to the Crank IR, which is you know a resonant antenna. I had that kind of dialed in perfectly for it. And I was able to talk to Connor uh, in Virginia with it without any problem. That was a single sideband contact. You copy me? What's, uh, what's my signal report? Are you making it? Hey, okay, that's you are five, five, five. I've also used it in digital modes, although I do dial back the power, so you're only going to be putting out about 20 watts when you're using a digital mode. Think of this as like, if you have a G90, right, then you may not really need an amplifier, because you've got about 20 watts, you've got a bit of play, you've got about an S unit or so that you're working with. Um, in addition to what they what you have in a QRP radio, right? Well with 45 watts you're doubling that power output so you've got an extra half an S unit of extra power. This is kind of a weird world that these this little amp lives in and amps like it because there's a couple of these types of amps on the market. If you have a QRP radio, you're generally 5 watts, maybe 10 watts output. That's a long jump to get you to 100 watts, and a lot of people may not have a 100 watt radio at home. For all you people that are listening to me right now that went QRP for your first radio instead of getting a 100 watt base station, you might want to look at an amp like this because, relatively speaking, it's less expensive than upgrading to a mobile 100 watt unit if you still wanted to do something like Parks on the Air. You are a little undergunned though. Price-wise, when I bought this unit, it was $150. Something happened, most likely the human malware virus, and the prices have gone up to $178. I purchased this off of eBay, which was really the only place I could find it. And although I am usually dubious of eBay auctions, I try not to use eBay, everything went successfully. I was able to get the amp, and it works perfectly. So to touch on this a, a bit more, when you have a 100 watt base station, you're generally going to have a, a larger radio. The smallest ones are generally like the FTM 891, which I'd still call backpack portable. Requires an external battery, etc., etc. This amp plus a smaller QRP radio is going to be maybe a little bit lighter than just carrying an 891 into the field. But it may be a little bit bulkier because you're going to have more parts, more things, loose things floating around your pack that you're going to have to deal with. So it's an option. All things are a compromise, as we already know and talk about in ham radio, and this is no exception. You're, you're getting a compromised power output, but you're still allowing that QRP portable capability. And if you need a little bit more power, flick that switch and you've got 45 watts at your disposal, which can work in a lot of situations for not just digital, which digital would be the most appreciative of that extra power, right? Because you're still not putting out that much. But single sideband 45 watts is doable. You're not going to be reaching necessarily across the country like I did talking to Connor, unless you're putting a pretty decent antenna up against it. Now a note on antennas. This would do well with like a dipole, possibly a half wave NFED or something along those lines that you know you have control over the tuning and that you're able to get that tuning down low. Half wave NFED might be the better option if you've got all the bands or multiple bands under 2 to 1 SWR, 1 1.5 SWR and lower would be preferred. Uh, Multi-band dipoles are somewhat hard to come by or they're not truly resonant. The linked dipole by Soda Beams would be a fantastic matching to this amp because it is resonant. You get those three bands, they're exactly resonant, and you're going to be able to put out all that power down the wire, which is exactly what you want in, in like a situation like that when you're in the field. Now, I'll give you a note on battery power. I generally pack, when I'm, when I'm going to use 100 watts or a larger battery for couple of hours, up to six hours or so. I generally take this Bio NO6 amp hour battery. With this amp, um, roughly 50% operating, you're going to get anywhere from four to six hours. If you transmit more, that's going to be more at the four hour rate. And, and really, that's just a mathematical equation of taking listening time against the battery draw on the radio and transmit draw, which we've already covered, is about 6.7 amps. So that's going to get you anywhere between four, six, maybe seven hours if you were a little judicious or dialed the power back a little bit. 
And of course, you can always charge this with a solar panel or something like that in the field to keep this going longer. Uh, that's advantageous because you can just always flick the thing off and just go straight back on QRP if you're making the contact. There's no reason to use the extra power. That'll help you out a lot in the long run if you're trying to run your entire shack off this little guy. Now I would like to point out this is not really a review. I purchased this. This is part of my kit. I've been planning on using it when, uh, whenever I can get myself back together and I can get outdoors again. I've been just really, really wanting to get back in the field. Uh, not just do a soda activation, although that's my primary goal. If I can find another campsite like Mount Pacifico that was a campsite, I would be there, uh, take my son and just go out and have a weekend. Uh, this is perfect for that, right? You put yourself in a situation, in a location where you'll do pretty well, give yourself a good antenna, and you should be good to go. The shout out for this uh, should go to Javier when we did the Pacifico Mountain Campout, actually. <laughs> CQ, CQ, this is Kilo 6, Tango, November Tango, with a summit on the air activation. He had one of these, and he was running it off of his 817, or something like that, an amp he purchased off of eBay. He was running either an, uh, a Yesu 817 or an 818, and I was uh, I was enamored with it. I loved the concept. I loved the fact that you didn't need it if you didn't want to. You could just leave it at home and go real lightweight QRP if you were just doing you know, real lightweight soda activation. So it gives you a little bit of modularity. I don't have a 100 watt portable radio. I, you know, I can always take my 7300, which is right there, and I have done that, but that's not backpackable. And that's always where I like to be. I like to be in that pack packable type radio setup that uh, you don't really get with uh, with something like that. So, anyway, those are my thoughts. Not really a review. I'm just introducing it to you, kind of. I have had made contacts with it though, so I have been successful. Um, I did. I will post this uh, in the description so you can check it out. This is linked to my Elecraft KX2, which does require a special cable setup for it. And that's probably the most difficult part of this whole kit is there is a control cable that tells that the radio tells the amp, hey, it's time to go hot, and and opens it up or turns it on. You have to modify a cable or create a cable connector for whatever radio you're going to run to it. This kit was kind of designed for the 817, 818, as it has that uh, DIN connector that comes with the whole kit. So if you if you have that, you're familiar with it, that's what you'd use. For the KX2, it's like a three ring headphone jack. I ended up making my own uh, and connecting it you know, to the connector. Works fine, and it works the same for the KX3. What I don't have yet is a solution to be able to both have cat control through my computer and key the amplifier. So that's something I will be working on in the future to figure out how to make that all work. I have a feeling I'm probably overthinking it as I normally do, but once I figure that out, I'll let you know as well. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Tell me your thoughts in the comments below. Let me know if you're using one of these amps. How long did it last for you? I don't really know. I don't know how long this thing's gonna last. I haven't put many hours of operation through it. So, you know, maybe it's, you know, Chinese junk and it's just gonna die after a couple months, but you know, I don't know. So don't take this as a review, really. It's just kind of my thoughts where I'm at right now. I've been successful in using it, so I figured I'd kind of share it with you all. And uh, I had a funny idea for that front end video, so I thought I would I would just go ahead and do it and just have fun with it. So anyway, I am Josh, KI6NAZ. I'd love it if you would subscribe. I live stream every Saturday at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. We have a wonderful community over on Facebook and Discord where you can ask your questions, come join a, a broader amateur radio community that is welcoming to any question you may have. Again, I'm Josh, KI6NAZ. Thank you so much for watching. See ya.